In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a pair of long extensions for the Polk Smart Station. Now, I've already showed you how to build the entire Polk Smart Station, including the shorter extensions. These are the extensions I use 90% of the time, but these are very necessary. These are for when I'm doing long materials like base molding, crown molding, and, and those kind of things. But primarily, that's for support. But primarily, I need the scale that'll go out past eight feet for when I'm doing doors and windows. That's those repetitive tasks where I need to set the flip stop and get the same cut over and over. And the standard shorter extensions are just not long enough. Now for these, you will need the supports. The supports are really only for the long extensions, but I did show you how to build these in that original video, and I will put a link to that one in this video right here. I'm Ron Polk, and this is the Smart Wood Shop. If you want to get a detailed set of plans to build a smart wood shop for yourself or one of my workbenches, there's a link in the description of this video down below where you can go and purchase plans download them instantaneously 24-7, 365. To start with, I'm gonna break down the two long extensions that I need. I had uh, a couple of pieces that I saved when I built the Polk Smart Station, so I didn't need to take the TSO Parallel Guide uh, to break that down. I did that in the previous video. Then I ran them through the table saw, and of course you can see when I did that that I have plenty of room on the Polk uh, Smart Station to do ripping. I get asked questions about that, but uh, plenty of room for the type of ripping I do since the larger stuff I reserve for the track saw. I'm setting up two routers here so that I can cut the T-track in a single operation. The lead router has the straight uh, upcut spiral bit to cut the dado, and the second one has the T-cutter, and so then I'm able to push uh, the first piece all the way through I don't know that you need to do this, but uh, it is nice to do it all in a single operation. Now I'm setting up a single router with a three quarter inch, just a basic straight cutter. This is to cut that very shallow rabbit for the scale to um, sit below the surface end. It'll take two passes because the actual cut is closer to uh, seven eighths of an inch and the cutter is three quarters. So I'll make a, a pass on each one then I'll reset the fence and make the second pass on each one. Now that both pieces are milled up and ready to drill the 20 millimeter holes, I am taking the extensions, the shorter ones, and I'm using them as a basic template. Now this isn't going to be the final template. I'm still going to use the Parf Guide Mark II. In fact, I drilled more holes than I needed. I really only needed enough to find where the pins go for all three lines of holes. I also only needed to actually put the tip of the 20 millimeter cutter in. I didn't need to uh, cut through it all. So I would do that different if I started over, but it, it, it did all work out. Once I got all three uh, lines of holes laid out and started uh, for connecting the uh, pins, those are just the pilot holes. Then I was able to flip it over and use the Parf Guide Mark II rulers and the pins and continue all three rows of holes to the very end. I still haven't cut these to their final length. They'll be, uh, right now they're full eight feet. Uh, they'll be slightly shorter than that, um, the dimension shown on the plan. Another thing I did with the uh, short extensions is the ends that go next to the saw on each end are slightly different. Uh, I had modified mine so that it would work with both the Festool and the DeWalt. And so the dimension from the saw varied uh, from saw to saw, so I made it the most common dimension, the one that would work with the DeWalt. And of course, once I did that, it would also work with the Festool. I showed that in another video. So figuring out how the ends that match up to the saw was a critical part of using the shorter extensions as a template. So, you know, laid out the holes and also laid out those ends and made those various uh, small adjustments and cuts. Once I had all of the pilot holes drilled, all three rows, I was able to then use the Parf Guide Mark II drill guide and use the pins into those holes and precisely lay out the holes 
uh, in a you know a fashion that keeps them at that 96 millimeter and these got spacing to work with the bench this is critical if you're going to use the TSO um, smart dogs they created for me that we're still waiting on getting a final availability for um, all of us to be able to get what we need in the meantime of course the plan show you an alternative where you can use a quarter inch bolt in a specific location you can go ahead and do that now and then when you get the um, uh, smart dogs later you can continue on using uh, those with the 20 millimeter holes all drilled out then it was time to take the battery operated router and that 45 degree chamfer bit and chamfer all the holes I only chamfered the top side you could do the bottom side if you wanted take a little extra time and then I take the same bit and run it around all the edges top and bottom uh, just to you know soften all the edges and also it helps them from getting damaged in uh, transport then I clamped on the pattern to make the slots all the way through each of the sides and that is so the supports that I'll hold these up will uh, slip in there there's no other attachment just kind of that indexing it holds them in place after completing the two long extensions before I put the scale on I wanted to test fit them and just see how everything worked out so I attached them with two of the TSO uh, smart dogs and then put the supports underneath and checked them out with the stop and I was very satisfied with the results now it's time to set up the uh, peel and stick scales the rulers that I use those fast cap uh, metric standard rails I start by uh, putting the tape on the double stick tape get it mashed down in there and really rubbed in with a piece of uh, plywood and then I cut out a little section just to, enough to sticky to um, you know stick a piece of the rail down and that is right to a mark that I made I did a test cut with the stop made a mark and I was able to put the uh, scale right where I want it of course the fine tuning will be the adjustment screw when I'm all done once that was set up I was able to lift each side of the tape and uh, pull the um, protective uh, cover off the double stick tape pull it off and put the um, rest on and of course then do it on the other side double check the stops make the final adjustment with the uh, with the connector screw or the the uh, adjustment screw and then I know that when I make a cut right or left they're going to be exactly the same you have the Polk Smart Station plans with all of the rich detail to clearly spell out exactly what you need to do to build these long extensions and now you have an example of me showing you exactly how easy it is if you enjoy these videos if you've learned anything if you'd like to see me make more remember give me a thumbs up and subscribe and it's really important to ring that bell because that's the only way you'll know when I put up a new video and if you get a chance share this channel with somebody you know and if you want to support the channel you can obviously purchase plans but you can also use a go to Ron's store on the website link in the description down below and you can use some of our affiliate links there where they'll give you the same price every day and share a little bit with us which helps us make these videos. Thanks for dropping into the Smart Wood Shop. You stay safe and have a great day.